I'm Joe Tosh with the All Aboard Westcliff organization, Westcliff, Colorado, and I'm here today in the uh, Western Jubilee Warehouse at Colorado Springs to uh, have a discussion with uh, my friend Scott O'Malley. And uh, Scott and I have negotiated over several years to have his grandfather's model railroad system called the Swamp Heights Railway System relocated from his uh, domain here in the Western Jubilee Warehouse to our Heritage Center in Westcliff, Colorado. So I'm going to turn my attention to Scott and uh, I want to discuss the origin and his grandpa Ralph Scheidler in Indiana and how the Swamp Heights Railway System came to be. Scott. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I was thinking uh, that uh, Grandpa thought of it as the uh, Smoky Mountains, and it's the uh, Rocky Mountains now. But uh, you guys did a wonderful job of setting this up, and uh, I saw the pictures. Well, I thought you would appreciate the pictures, and when you make your initial visit to us in Westcliff, I think you're going to be even more impressed at its reconstruction. We have an event in August. August called Track Fever, and it'll be Friday the 13th, 14th, and 15th. Yeah. We expect many visitors there. Now, uh, with Grandpa Ralph, I, uh, I know there's some question as when the actual layout was constructed, and I know it's been modified some, but uh, I have a sign that came with it that says established 1958. Uh, when was it moved to Colorado Springs from Indiana? Boy, I think it uh, came here since I got this building, Santa Fe building, and uh, and I don't know uh, how long it's been. Uh, maybe uh, twenty years. I see. Well, uh, that we brought it out here, and Ron Perry and I brought it out. We made a bed truck out of a trailer bed racks, you know, because you can't sit these things flat, as you know. As, uh, well, you recall so. when we moved it out of your basement last fall that uh, we uh, took it out in the four sections. I think that's when we decided the original was built on a ping pong table because of the width of the plywood. Yeah. But uh, it actually made the trip from here to West Cliff and reassembled with very little damage to it, and it's all been repaired if there was any. And uh, I, uh, I think that uh, it's just as good as you've ever seen it before. It's been freshened up, and uh, I'm really excited about you coming to West Cliff and getting hold of the controls and running the two loops. And it has, as you know, an O gauge and an O27 gauge. Yeah. And uh, I think it's um, it's running like a million dollars. And. Uh, I, you gave me a record album several years ago, and uh, it was recorded in Indiana when you were uh, very small, and uh, it uh, had a picture of yourself and another young lad and your grandfather. And uh, do you remember that album? It was Bardsman. Bardsman album. And I looked at it again the other day, uh, abiding by your instructions not to open it, and there is a song on there about the Swamp Heights Railroad. Yeah. And I've never been able to listen to that song to this day, and you are obviously playing a musical instrument. Well, it was the instrumental. It was an instrumental. Yeah. And I played banjo and a harmonica on that. So when do you suppose I can ever listen to that recording? Because I went on never, the, never. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I swear I have never opened it, and I thought, well, I'm missing out on quite a bit by not hearing the Swamp Heights Railroad. Uh, I'll never forget the day that Grandpa said that uh, he'd label it up and uh, take it down and uh, move into a smaller place. And I'll never forget that day, and uh, he uh, he did that, you know. So, was Grandpa? Pardon me. Was Grandpa Scheidler a railroader? Well, he was uh, a train guy. Okay. Well, what amazes myself and anyone that's looked at it is the 
the uh, craftsmanship that went into building that, and it wasn't in the days when you could go to Hobby Lobby and buy a building and a milk cow and a, and a, a herd of geese. <laughs> He'd but, rather build it than buy it. And that is that is phenomenal about how uh, the landscaping was done with in some cases, a lot of natural stone. That's what made it so heavy to get it out of your basement, of course. Yeah. But uh, I've had so many people already say, I never noticed that before. And you'll see the hog house or you'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you that uh, that uh, rig, the pump that's at the uh, engine house, uh, I don't know if it's made out of tongue depressors or what, but it, it works. It works fine. You know, we've got it tuned up and... Uh, uh, what uh, imagination that he must have had to put that. He did, and uh, I was real picky on adding to it, you know. I think the baseball team, and that came from Arizona, and Owen Perkins brought me that, well, the baseline. On top of that, you've got a billboard behind the baseball field with your friend Waddy Mitchell's yeah. picture on it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's... it's uh, just so many personal things, and uh, I, uh, I think we're going to have a lot of questions as we open it up to the public, and I know that we are going to safeguard this treasure uh, to keep from any uh, uh, bad things happening to it, and uh, it's, uh, it's really a, a stand back and look at it as opposed to a hands-on situation. Yeah. But... Uh, I uh, I just want you to know how much we treasured at all aboard Westcliff, and uh, I hope that you have full confidence that it went to a good place, and you can share. I do, and I think uh, it's time to share it because the world was you could only get three people in there, you know. Well, yeah, that's true, and I know one of the driving forces between uh, getting it from your place to uh, to our place was. Richard Arlen Spain from Topeka, Kansas, Dick Spain. And when he seen it here in your basement in 2016, he said, you really need to work with Scott and see if you could get that for all aboard Westcliff. And then uh, a couple of years went by and uh, finally you and I negotiated this. Yeah. And I think uh, even though Mr. Spain hasn't seen it, he'll be with us in August. But uh, I, I want you to to uh, sit there and... and well, your uh, wife, uh, Sherry, uh, showed me those pictures. Yes. And they are magnificent. And uh, Mike did a great job on the uh, paintings and stuff, the background. He really did, and that was um, his wife, Donna, of, of Holt Photography, that took the pictures. So that between Good. them, they have much talent and uh, I want to give a special thanks to you for having Lon Rogers your your right-hand man assist us in uh, in uh, taking apart the display and reassembling it and uh, I, I can't tell you how much help he's been to the cause and I knew it made you feel comfortable that we, that we I do I do yeah. and Lon's a great guy you know well, I tell you, Scott, I've, I've really taken great pride in getting to know you over the years. And uh, like we were reminiscing, I think uh, 2014 maybe we first conversed. And then 2016 we held a big event here at your facility for yeah. the Santa Fe Railroad Group. Yeah. And our friendship has been rewarding. And uh, it has been for me. Yes, I, and I think now that we've got this tie between us with, uh, with the All Aboard organization, that it's even... Even more so. Yeah, and, uh, I agree. I uh, I think we could continue this conversation for a long while this afternoon, <laughs> but I suspect our our crew would uh, would say uh, I think our tape's about to run out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I uh, I think we'll conclude this at this point, and maybe we can do another session about some other aspects of your life and with the. Uh, the bluegrass and the Western Jubilee, etc. But uh, I appreciate your time today, Scott. Thank you.